Hey y'all, alrighty, we are back out in the garage again as you can see, it is time to assemble a cylinder head. First of all, I need to lap these valves into this head, okay? Um, so, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my drill, one of my drills, right there, and then I'm going to be using some valve grinding compound, and I'm going to lap those valves to this head right here and I'm going to show you some show you how I do it and show you some ways to do that and show you some I'm also going to be putting some valves in this head I may not completely finish it tonight but I will get at least one or two in there okay all right so let's get started let's get busy here First of all, you're going to want to use some sort of valve grinding compound. You're going to probably need, there are, there are uh, tools or uh, drill-like pieces of equipment that do this valve lapping, okay? Uh, you can use those. Uh, there's also the hand lap. Uh, tools that you just buy like in auto parts stores and what you do they go they they're just long slender handle they go in between your hands and you rub them back and forth they got little suction cups on both ends and uh, they work pretty well too so it's just up to you whatever you feel comfortable with using whatever you like to use that's what you that's what you use okay if you want to use uh, you know the hand lap kind of tool go right ahead if you want to use something else you want to use the drill that's fine too no big deal all right get your valve first of all let's see if we can get the okay you see how nice and wide that edge right there is okay it's not a sharp edge it's a nice dull edge and it's pretty wide too what that is, is why you want it like that, is to have a nice, wide, broad seat. And why that is, is so that it has a long wear. It wears a long, long time. Okay? So, of course, you want to look at the valve. You want to make sure there's no nothing wrong with it. I don't see anything wrong with this valve, necessarily. I think it looks pretty good to me. Do the same thing with the seat. Um, we're going to start with this seat right here. Take your lapping compound, squeeze a little bit out, just apply it to the seat or the face of the valve there. Okay, take your valve, stick it in the guide in the head. Once you get it in there, try to wiggle it around, see if it has a lot of wiggle. It will have some, a little bit, but it shouldn't have an excessive amount. So, next, what we want to do, get the drill, and then you want to just chuck the valve up into the, chuck the end of the valve up into the drill chuck, okay? almost ready and then you just want to go back and forth Okay, so basically like that, real, real simple. Nothing all that complex to it, okay? All right, you'll have the 
gray goop <laughs> on the valve, on the face of the valve, and on the valve seat. You'll want to clean these off as much as you can. First, wipe them down with a towel or a rag. This is where, this is time where you want to spend time here. You want to look at the seat, the face here, sorry, the face. And you see that gray band that's all the way around there? See how it's pretty uniform? It's a nice uniform band all that, that is all the way around there. Okay, that's something you want to look for. Now, we're going to clean the seat here up. And we're going to look for that too. These heads have already been cleaned, by the way. So, so let's, let's get a lot. It's looking pretty good right there. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, now. Next step. Clean the seat area and the valve of to free it of grit. Okay, you want to get that that grit out of there okay so you'll still see that polished or that ground band on your valve okay you'll still see that so that's not going to go away so don't if it you know when it doesn't go away don't worry it shouldn't Okay, so, all right, our valve is cleaned up, our seat is lapped, our valve and our seat are lapped together, now these are lapped together, so these are a matched pair now, all right, we don't want to like move this valve to down here, okay, this valve needs to stay with this exhaust port, okay, or hole. Okay, I'm going to use my little bit of lubricant here. This is Comp Cam's lubricant. Uh, it's their lifter lubricant. I think it's going to be just fine for this here. I'm going to stick this in here. There's a storm been going on. I'm just going to let you all know. So if the lights go out, you know what's happening. I hear some thun I've heard some thunder in the background. So, and my lights are kind of flickering a little bit. So. All right. So now, move on. We put a valve seal on our valve stem. Okay. So let me flip you around here to the back side. See, there's the other side of the valve, the other end of the stem. Now, there's a little bit of that cam lubricant, lifter lubricant. There, so. Okay. All right, there we go. Valve is in valve seal is installed. Now that keeps oil from or too much oil from going down into the valve guide, which is this thing right here. Okay, that's your valve guide. The seal keeps too much oil from going down in there. It allows just enough oil to go past that to help lubricate the stem and the guide. Okay. So that's what that does. Okay. I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the rest, all the rest of these. Okay. All the rest of these valves. And I'm going to lap the rest of these in. Okay. 
and I will pick back up with you. But before I do, I need to tell you something. You, yes, you, I need to tell you something. Thank you. There's over 200 subscribers to this channel, and I am amazed. Truly, I am. So, I want to say thank you, a huge thank you for all that you do for supporting this channel, and I really appreciate it. So, and if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting on? I mean, come on, man. There's some good information here. I'm passing along some good stuff. I'm showing you how I do all this stuff. Okay? So, um, let's get busy. Okay? Oh, and another thing. If you aren't subscribed, you should really consider it. Because if you're not, you know, you're missing out. There's some really good information being passed along here. And I can pass along this information to you. When you subscribe, you get notified. Just click that little bell icon. Boop. Right there it goes. You know? And you get notified when I drop a new video, like this video here, or, you know, anything else. So, I'm going to do the rest of these. I'll get right back. Okay, y'all, we're back. And um, I've got all of the valves lapped. But I do have one little dilemma. I'm missing one valve stem seal. Oh, man. So, I don't know where in the world it's at. It could be virtually anywhere. So, I'm just going to order another set. And there we go. Okay. Probably from one of my local auto parts stores. Um... Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to rotate the head around so that you and I'm going to put you over here so that you can see everything that's going on. I can put the drill away because I'm done lapping the valves in. Um, the reason why the valves are being lapped in, why they were being lapped in, is to create a better seal between the valve face and the valve seat. Okay? That's what that was all about. So that that could be, that seal could be improved. Basically, it's like you hone a cylinder and then you put new piston rings in it. And you allow the piston rings to break in and the cylinder to break in together. Basically, that's the same thing we're doing right here. Okay? So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to put probably the springs on these two valves, okay, uh, an exhaust and an intake, and let uh, you see how that all happens, okay? So, first, got my valve spring. I'm going to clean her up. Uh, it's just got some, like, little bits and debris, and it's just, it's a little like dust more than anything else. So, I'm going to do that. So, I've got my seal on. Next, I need to, this piece of cardboard, I can go ahead and throw that away. That's what I had my valves uh, in. So, store my valves in that. So, that's kind of nice, you know. Get to throw away something like that, you know. Don't need it no more. So. <sighs> All right, we're doing an intake. That's two grooves. 
I'll show you what I'm talking about. See how this has got two uh, ridges in it, okay? The valve stem has two grooves in it that correspond to that, okay? And see, they're supposed to, that lock is supposed to sit on there like that, and then the other lock sits right on right beside it. See, just like so. And let me angle this camera down here. So, you see, that's how that's supposed to happen. Okay, then your spring will be in this area this general area and then the retainer will be right there on top of the spring you'll get to see this in just a minute so next i need a retainer here's my retainers okay all right let's see Now, let me give you a word of caution about valve spring compressors. If you're going to buy a valve spring compressor, one similar to this is probably something like what you would want to use. This is a hand-powered one. There are better ones than this one. Okay, this one's pretty good. Well, it's, it's good enough. Let's just say that. Okay. But, yeah, this one, it leaves a little bit to be desired. I mean, it could be better. There's no doubt in my mind. It could be, it could be better. There's, there's, there's definitely room for improvement. So, um, yeah, that's just great. So there's a sliding bar that doesn't like to slide all that much. Even though you loosen it up and everything, it just doesn't really want to do what it's supposed to do. Okay, and I see something else wrong here these feet on here these feet right there they're kind of they're a little bit bent I'm just gonna be honest with you they're just a little bit bent so I'm gonna try to straighten them up here just a little bit and get them try to get them a little bit better shape This thing is a little bit fiddly to operate too. That's another problem. A little fiddly to operate. So I'll just pull the handle and it has this lock that has a spring on it which engages let's see right there 
basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this back far enough so that I can get to the grooves. See, like this one, get to the grooves like on this one here. Okay, that's basically the object of what I'm doing here. See, it has this, so I pull on this, push on that, and squeeze that together and it comes down here. Okay, I'll show you more here in just a minute. So. Okay, all right, locks, okay. Now, you use a little bit of grease. Just some sticky, sticky grease. Now, I know I'm using a Mopar head here. However, a lot of these same techniques are gonna be exactly the same, regardless of manufacturer, okay? Now, some may have some special, unique things they want you to do. But all of them pretty much the same deal. Okay? All of them. So, you know, Ford, Chevrolet, uh, you name it. You know, even your more European or Japanese makes, they do the same thing here. Just get the locks in. Okay? And then we release. I use the grease to keep the, the keepers or the locks in place. Okay, that's what the grease is for. So squeeze the handle, release the little uh, catch, and then release the rod there. And there we go. We've got an assembled valve intake valve in the head now um, I don't want to harp on something but I feel like I kind of have to here just a little bit um, please when you're looking for valve spring compressors try to buy the best one you can get okay this one wasn't the best even though it is a craftsman and when I bought it, it was many years ago. I'm talking probably 15, maybe 20 years ago. Uh, so, you know, back at that time, Sears was still doing, I thought, okay. Evidently, they were you know, farming out valve spring compressors to somebody else that, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this look, this thing's kind of like something I would expect to see, like Harbor Freight, maybe. I'm not saying anything bad about Harbor Freight, but you know, you know what they do. Okay, let's get on with the exhaust valve. Stop yapping. Okay. So let's see. Okay, now something else to keep in mind is try to keep this, these feet, uh, I'm calling them feet, try to keep these as flat on the valve keeper or retainer as possible, okay? All right, I've tried to get out all my slack that I possibly can. I may have to go back and get another grab on this, but here we go. Let's see, let's let you see this here in action and uh, try and get you some good pictures here good video of what's going on here 
Now my rod here presses on the bottom of the valve, okay? So, all right. Now, okay. Now, after you've done this about a dozen times or more, your hands will feel like they're about ready to fall off and you'll probably be shaking and everything else. <laughs> and everybody will be pointing and laughing at you. So, all right. But maybe they won't be pointing and laughing at you so much when you say, hey, I got these shoulder heads done. Look at here. So, who knows? Okay back over here so let me get you over here so you can put this down all right see now we're on the exhaust valve the exhaust valve has four grooves and the lock or retain keeper has four ridges or in there so we gotta get this in there as far as possible if that's possible. All right, there we go. Got that in. That's great. Now something else too. Um, if when you're doing this and it's your first try, have some patience with yourself. Um, I'm noticing, you know, I've done this plenty of times before. But I'm noticing that, you know, if you don't do it every day, you know, every few, you only do it every few years, you know, it, uh, it becomes one of those things you have to kind of, uh, relearn some of the, uh, not mechanics of it, but I guess the proper way to do this. All right. So. Don't beat yourself up. Give yourself time. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to release this even with, you know, just one retainer, one keeper, one lock on there. So. And then I'm going to have to get another bite on the, with the tool here. So, let me, uh... Let me pause the camera. I'll be right back. Because um, the video is getting to be quite long. Okay. I just want to show you this real quick. I unloaded the valve spring compressor. It's sitting on one lock. It's okay. But you can see the, uh, <laughs> the, the rod there is supposed to be put, touching the bottom of the valves. The bottom of the valve isn't. It's, uh, well, it's got a gap there between the bottom, the bottom of the valve and the push rod. So, what I've got to do is I've got to get this unlocked. And, uh, get it unlocked. Um, I'm sorry. I know this is a lot of jumping around here. But I'm just trying to get you some decent video here, some decent footage. Okay. All right. So move the push rod out. Okay. All right. So move the push rod out. Uh, closed up the gap. Here we go. Now you notice I'm you probably this uh, this is the lock that locks this mechanism in place and keeps it from releasing. So when I'm pushing when I'm pulling on it, I'm pushing down on this too at the same time. See, so do it one, give it one more. 
Mm. Not enough. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, I think I've got enough. I'm going to quickly put the lock on. So, because I want this to all work. Okay, there we go. It is on and it is in place and it is glorious. Did you see it there? See what I'm talking about? Okay. Sorry for the crappy camera angle. I've got to release this. Okay, I know this video is long. I do apologize. I like to keep the videos uh, shorter, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Uh, so I would like to thank you so much for watching. And I hope you were able to learn something. And again, even though I'm working on a Mopar cylinder head, this same procedures are applicable to pretty much any engine out there that uses coil spring valve springs. Okay? I think uh, there's some Italian engines like Ferraris that might use a hairpin spring. And some motorcycle engines use a hairpin spring. Uh, so, or what they call a hairpin spring. So, anyway, um, again, I would like to thank you for all the likes and the shares and the subscribes. And I really, seriously do appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to carry on with this and try to get a little bit more done. And so, uh, try to get a little bit more done tonight. The other head is completely assembled. Uh, all the valves are in it, the valve springs are in it, and everything like that. Um, I can't finish this head, of course, because of the missing valve stem seal. So, I'll have to go to the parts store tomorrow and order some, probably. But, um, just try to get as much done as I can. All right. Um, so, thank you very much. And, uh, spider on me. Ugh. So, yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, God bless, and uh, have a great one, okay?